Now, today's subject is, in my opinion, an extremely important one, because we'll be talking about the most important people in the universe. Now, who might that be? Who do you think is the most important of everyone? Well, I'll let you know, and that is women. I got to learn a lot more about them when I died and was able to spend time with the Savior, in my death experience. Because I got to, you know, witness the Garden of Eden. I got to see the different women in the Bible. I got to see Mary. I got to see all these things. I got to see Jesus grow up and be taught. I always looked at women as very special. But when I got to see all that stuff in my experience, it just really hit home and made it more solid in my mind. Now, think about what a woman is. A woman is someone who is able to reproduce children, create children here with the help of God. And there's nothing greater than that, nothing closer to Godhood than that. There's nothing in the universe that's more important than that. One human is worth more than all the planets in the universe combined. They don't get exalted. They don't get saved. They don't become gods. They have their measure of creation that they fulfill and they get to where they can be and this planet will become a celestial kingdom in the end. But it's not the same as a human going back to live with God and be like him. So this is why Satan hates women so much. He does everything he can to destroy women. Makes fun of them, makes them second-class citizens, makes fun of what they can do, makes fun of having children. Oh, you stay home barefoot and pregnant, you know, this kind of a routine, and all you do is change diapers. Uh, that's just, oh, how important is that? That's no big deal. It's better to go be, uh, uh, you know, a secretary for somebody or a president of a company. Yeah, those things are important in this planet, but on this mortal earth, but in the eternities, children are the greatest, and women are the only beings that can reproduce them. So Satan tries to kill what they produce. We have abortions by the tens of millions every year. We have sterilization. We have uh, political and other groups that everything they have put forth is to cut down on the number of people on the planet one way or another and then making sure that people think that in order to be a greater woman you got to be more manly. How important are women to God? Think about it. He can't make a, a person in the spirit world or here without a woman. Now you, you say, well, God's all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present, and all this. Well, yeah, but if he could just produce a baby out of nothing or out of a ball of mud, why did he need Mary? Why was Mary picked to be the mother? Of course, she was a very righteous person. She was in the right lineage. But he can't do it on his own. He needed a woman. You know, when you think about Christ being born, God didn't just brew it out of mud, and so he needed a woman to produce the baby, to create the baby, the body, for Christ's spirit to inhabit. Now, that's a pretty big deal. Being the mother of the Son of God, uh... She's very, very special. She's not a prophet or she's not someone you pray to or and she doesn't, you know, really come and do special things for you any more than any mother would for their children. But she was the mother of the Son of God. But I'm sure she had a lot of thought, remembering all the prophecies 
for the last, you know, 4,000 years. And now here she is, the one to bring Christ into the world. That part is great. And there's another part that is really pretty cool. After the resurrection, who who was at the tomb? Well, you know, Mary and Martha and the rest, you know, they go there and then they go tell the apostles and they come there and then they leave. And then Mary's there by herself. Well, there's a lot of reasons why she was there by herself. But then while she was there, Christ shows up. She wants to go give him a hug. Very natural. And he says, well, touch me not, for I have not yet descended unto my God. And then go tell the apostles that I'm going to go see Dad, and then I'm going to come back. Okay, how special is that? A woman is the first person to have him greet personally. All that happened there, I can't tell you that, uh, but Mary was the first one, a woman. In the universe, a woman gets to see the risen Lord. Okay, so does that mean a woman are special? Uh, I don't know what else is going to tell you that. But I can tell you one more thing. Now, if you read the book, you'll already know this in the Garden of Eden chapter. I have a video on the Garden of Eden that talks a lot of detail more about it. Uh, but for here, I'll tell you that what happened after the garden was done, God the Father introduces Adam to the garden. He escorts him in first. And we were there watching all this. You know, we were spirit children of our Father in Heaven. We got to watch all this then. Anyway, he brings him in and no one pays much attention to it. Adam is the name of a calling, which is the first man. And yeah, he's important. He's huge, hugely important. But still, not too many people really paid much attention. Now, for all of you people who have had the experience of going to a... Uh, General Conference for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, when you're in a conference center or the tabernacle, the uh, apostles come in, usually kind of one at a time, they kind of you know straggle in here, here and there, and nobody pays much attention to it. And that's similar to what happened when Adam came in. But then when the prophet walks in, what happens? You have an almost instant silence, takes a few seconds and everyone's quiet. Everyone stands up and they stand in reverence to the prophet. You know, really, the man is great, but the calling is what they're standing for. The calling of prophet of God. And everything goes silent as in respect. Well, take that same kind of a thing and put it into the Garden of Eden. So now here comes Eve. Elohim escorts her into the garden, and what happens? Everybody stands in reverence. Everybody's quiet. Everybody shows respect to Eve, which means the mother of all living. So that's another calling name. Uh, the mother of all living is the calling, Eve, you know. And so how important is that? You were the mother of all living. Sheesh. I don't know how you can get a bigger calling than that. How special is that? I consider women kind of, you know, way up way up here and men are kind of down here. God says they're equal, so I got to agree with that. But as I see women, uh, they're just massive because God's work and glory is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. Okay. So in other words, God's work in other words, all of he, all he does, and glory, is to exalt us. Now, if you have a child, then you can exalt them. You have 
the teaching, you have the prophets to bring the word, you have the atonement of Christ, which uh, satisfies the law of justice and, and gives us the cleanliness we need to go back to a Father in Heaven. And this is done through the grace of Christ. So no matter what we do, we're not going there without His grace, but we need to follow His commandments, repent and all that stuff. And then He fills in everything that we cannot. And that's His grace. And so we are saved by grace after all we can do. But none of that is useful without a baby. Without a child. What good is it? And so how important are women? Big deal. You know, why are they the worst enemy to Satan? Because they build babies. They make children that God can exalt. And so Satan's logic is, if I can stop that, then he can't exalt anybody and he can't fulfill his work in glory. And so that's why women are so poorly treated in so many places in the world and looked at as second or third class citizens. There's one more thing that I, I need to mention. The gender, sex, gender. I know in this world we have all kinds of con controversy over it. Satan is very happy with stuff like that because it confuses things. Obviously, you know that God made Adam and Eve. And he called them man and woman. And all through the scriptures, it talks about how women are mothers. Now, where does this come from? Some of you may know about what an intelligence is. An intelligence is a self-existing individual that God did not make. It is eternal, it has always existed. And in that state of being an intelligence, there are male and female. It is an eternal law. It cannot be changed by anyone. Not even God can change it. That uh, female or male intelligence inhabits the body, spirit body, that our mother in heaven creates. God doesn't make it. Our mother, who is a God, makes the body. And then that's inhabits it. And then that, those two together, inhabit this body that our mother here on earth makes. And that's what animates things. And that is what your character, personality, the, the individuality of you comes from that intelligence. So I don't know how to make that more clear. I know that's controversial to a lot of people. Uh, but Christ was controversial. The prophets have all been controversial. So that's nothing new. Uh, so I can just tell you that Women are really special. And, oh, I guess I better tell you this thing. I was just thinking about it. And that is, okay, here I have, you know, scriptures and the writings of the prophets. And people say, well, how come we don't have women talked about in here and the men are doing everything, you know, they're all, you got uh, Peter and Paul and, and Joshua and Jeremiah and all these people. Why, why can't it be a woman? Well, obviously a woman is the mother, which is, in my opinion, a greater calling. But what is this book for? What are these books for? Are they a treatise on civil laws? Are they here to teach us uh, what kind of clothes to wear? And specifically, you know, what they look like, like the robes or the or shirts like this. Are they here to say what kind of chairs you should sit on or what kind of houses you should build? Heavens. Even when you have the, you have the uh, stable, it doesn't even tell you that it was a cave. It just says there's a stable. It doesn't tell you that the manger's made out of stone. 
It just says there's a manger. Why? Because that's not important. And when they sit in the upper room for the uh, Last Supper, it does say they have a table. It doesn't tell you that the table's only this tall. And it doesn't tell you that they're leaning on their on their pillows and eating with their right hand. Uh, and that because there's a table, the guy was rich. Because nobody had tables. Christ didn't grow up with tables and chairs. They had a carpet they had on the floor. But that doesn't describe all that stuff. It barely describes the cloak and robe that people wear. Why? Because it's not this domestic story. The Bible is the doctrine that the people need to follow to go back to be with God. And men are called to hold the administrative priesthood. Women have creative priesthood because all power is priesthood. And women can build babies and that's a creative priesthood which is gigantic. And the men hold administrative priesthood and servitude how I like to say it. Everything that a man is given, the priesthood, you know, and, you know, fatherhood, uh, husband, is to be a servant, a servant to what the women make. You serve them by teaching them the gospel. You serve them by uh, doing the ordinances, baptisms, confirmations, marriages. Christ did the greatest service act of all through the atonement. That was the greatest there is. And before he left, he washes his apostles' feet, you know, and they were kind of whining about it. And he said, no, no, let me do it. And Christ says, well, then fine. If you don't want me to do that, then you're not with me. So then Peter goes, well, wash all of me, you know. And, and so what Christ was saying, he says, he that is the greatest of all is the servant to all. Well, women and men are both servants to children and to each other. So, we, you know, we, we serve. It's service. You're not a lord. You're not a master up there with a big stick beating on people and saying, you know, I'm going to get you if you don't do this right. That's not what the priesthood is. It's... It's not a usurping power over people. Scriptures tell you that if you do that, you don't have the priesthood. And it tells you that you should do it through long suffering and love unfeigned and, you know, your gentleness and meekness. And you're a, you're a teacher and a leader and a guider. You're not a master and a boss that tells everybody what to do. So... Don't be confused and think that women are left out of the scriptures because they're not good. But still, it's just, it's the man's half of the priesthood in teaching and administrating and serving. So it doesn't mean the men are better. It doesn't mean the men are greater, uh, have more power. None of that. You know, when when uh, people in in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to go into the temple need a temple recommend. And they go in to see the judge in Israel, the bishop, and then the state president, and do get this recommend that says, you're following the minimum rec uh, requirements of obedience to go in here and assume a greater level of of responsibility, of covets, covenants. Uh and that if you can't handle these, we're not going to give you the bigger ones because then you'll just have a greater judgment against you. So, does that make him a master? No. That makes him someone who's doing what God wants done. He's, he's sitting there in place of Christ. So that's where you got to look at it. So he's just someone that God has asked to ask us 
if we are following the commandments. So, I don't know how else to put it. Uh, and, you know, he'll call them queens and priestesses, you know, kings and queens and priestesses and priests. But if when you read in the scriptures, it says that when the two husband and wife make it to the celestial kingdom, it says, and they shall be gods. It doesn't say, and one will be God and the other is going to be their helper. It says, they shall be gods. They just have different assignments. But at any rate, uh, I've been thinking about that a lot lately because women are kind of having a bad rap, I think, lately and being destroyed. Satan is extremely happy when women can... And their role can be belittled or demeaned or destroyed. And this world is getting worse and worse at, at following God's laws and better and better at messing up everything. And now Satan is, you know, destroying the men. And he wants to destroy the family because that's the government of heaven. That's government in the celestial kingdom is family. And so if he can mess that up, he thinks he's successful. Obviously, in the end, he won't be, but it's uh, rotten how he's doing it now and how many people want to follow what he says. I, I don't get it. Anyway, women are great. I think they're the superest things in the universe <laughs> because of their ability to create life, which there's nothing greater. And I just wanted to tell you this. I been thinking about it. Anyway, I, I'm i happy to have this time to share this with you. You have any questions, let me know. You can put comments down, more comments. The, uh, the more people will see it and the more people will understand when we can have answers to these questions. So, as always, because my witness is a testimony and is not just information, I bear this witness to you of the truthfulness of what I've been telling you and the sacredness of women and their calling. And I bear this witness in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.